Yeah, dear participants, uh, welcome to the course of supply chain digitization. So, it is jointly being taught by Professor Priyanka Verma, Professor Sushmita Narayana, Professor Devabrata Das from IA Mumbai. So, in today's session, we will talk about analytics in supply chain management. So, this is the first lecture of module 3. So, now let us start with what is analytics. So, you must be hearing this term day in and day out and this is the buzzword in today's time. So, we need to know what are the various characteristics of analytics, what are the various components of analytics. So, the first and foremost uh, before I do any analytics, I need to have a clear objective in mind like why am I doing the analytics, so what is the goal am I trying to achieve after doing this. So, if I have that clear cut objective in mind with that goal I should collect data. So, the first and foremost data is a very important part of analytics. So, once we collect the data uh, there could be some discrepancy in the data. So, I have to clean it, process it. So, once I clean it, process it, I get good data, then from there I need to develop model. So, the model could be statistical model, it could be AIML based model, it could be optimization model. So, whatever model you develop, you have to make sure that the objective uh, what was there in your mind earlier, the model should serve that purpose. Okay. So, then only uh, the model will be useful. So, once we develop the model, we test it, validate it, then the model should be useful for taking better decisions. So, there could be multiple decisions which a decision maker can take, but the model would uh, give me an analytical way to take better decisions. So, once I get the decisions, then I have to implement this in the organization. Once I implement it, the implementation should create value uh, to the organization. So, now if I summarize it in analytics, I have four important characteristics. The first one is data, using then second one is model, the third one is decision and fourth one is value creation. So, if I summarize in uh, one line, it would be like this, use data to create models which will lead to decisions that create value. So, if I have to summarize analytics in one sentence, this could be the uh, sentence. Now, as you saw in the last uh, slide, data is a very important part of uh, my analytics. So, now if we see the trend, I have the data for last 15 years which I got it from statista.com website. In 2010, 1.2 trillion gigabytes of data uh, were created, captured, copied and consumed worldwide. In 2015, it became 15.5 trillion gigabytes. In 2020, it went up to 59 trillion gigabyte, uh, gigabytes and then we had COVID. So, in the COVID period, lot of companies digitize themselves and if I go for digitization, obviously, uh, more data will be created, uh, captured and consumed and that happened. And now, if we see the prediction in 2025, uh, the total amount of data uh, which will be created, captured, copied and consumed worldwide will be around 175 trillion gigabytes. Now, you can see in last 10-15 years the data volume has been increasing exponentially. So, therefore, I can see that big data are being created. So, I need to know the characteristic of uh, big data. 
Okay. So, therefore, let us move to the next slide uh, which talks about big data. So, now if you uh, see here there are multiple V's uh, are there the first one is volume, the second one is variety, third one is velocity, fourth one is variability, fifth one is value and sixth one is veracity. So, these are the important uh, V of big data using this six big uh, V we can actually uh, characterize the uh, big data. So, let us first start with volume. So, the volume it says huge amount of data that means the large volume of data which is being created, captured, consumed, copied every day across the world. So, we will uh, take an example and explain this concept called volume and the customer order data. So, I am sure you must be uh, purchasing items from e-commerce website like Flipkart, Amazon, then nowadays Q-commerce has also come. So, all in all of this platform, it if you see specifically let us take an example of e-commerce. So, where you can place an order throughout the day 24 by 7 from any place and you can send the order to any, any location. So, therefore, 24 by 7 the data is being created and captured in their e-commerce website. So, the data could be like first you are searching in the website like what item you like, what product you want. So, then after searching you are shortlisting. So, you have search data in the e-commerce website, then you are shortlisting, then you are checking uh, out. So, after you check out uh, then you have to select the address na, in which address you want to send the products to. So, after you check out then you have to pay for it. The payment could be through credit card, through debit card, uh, then we have UPI nowadays also and then sometimes cash on delivery option is also there. So, all of this information are being uh, captured in the e-commerce platform. So, imagine across the globe 24 by 7 millions of customers are using this e-commerce platform. So, amount of data which are being generated is huge voluminous data. Then we have also another example called uh, inventory count. This is very special example from like if I see from the point of view of a large warehouse distribution centers and this is very important concept and lot of data are also being generated over there. So, take an example of distribution center, you have let us take an example of e-commerce distribution centers. So, obviously, they will have varieties of product and for each product I need to know exactly for how many units. Uh, this particular product is there in their uh, distribution center. Let us say in ERP system, enterprise resource planning system, the data shows 10 units, but in reality you might have 9 units, there could be 1 unit which might be dis misplaced or in reality it could be 11 unit also or it may not have scanned properly. So, this kind of discrepancy are very common in distribution centers. So, how to avoid this discrepancy? I need to count uh, the inventory uh, physically and therefore, I have to make sure that whatever inventory are there in physical system, it has to match with the ERP system. So, this process is called inventory count and through inventory count process, lot of data are also being uh, generated. Then the next V is variety, okay. next V is variety. So, let us see, so variety means multiple data sources and forms. So, what do you mean by multiple data sources and forms? So, this could be let us say image data, this could be audio data, this could be video data this could be text data and so on. So, therefore, there are varieties of data which can be created, copied, consumed and used uh, for model development purpose or decision making purpose. So, 
let us take an example of customer review so if you see customer review uh, suppose you buy a product from somewhere then you have to give review uh, suppose you did not like the product you can give a review let us say very bad bad poor so you can enter as a number sometimes they ask categorical question is it good bad and so on so the option would be excellent good poor very good and so on these are the uh, categorical data then sometimes you may also enter the description of the product or description of the problem so in a text format you enter whether i like the product or not if i do, did not like what part of the product i did not like or what part of the service i did not like so you you enter a text so that is a example of text data then also many a time you give an example of image data let us say so suppose the product is damaged so i'll take the uh, image of the product and then put it in the e-commerce website so that is an example of image data okay then i also have uh, audio data and nowadays if you see in google you can actually do audio search suppose i want to search something instead of writing or typing i'll say this word uh, let us say i want to find the best book in the world if i want to search this i'll just tell i want to find the best book in the world this is an audio uh, kind of data which is being uh, captured over there then also i have uh, video type of data so what happens i'll talk about agv so agv is an example in which video data is also being generated so agv means automated guided vehicle so if you have uh, visited a high end warehouse where agv are there so they move across the aisles of warehouse they take videos in and around and then give the, give us the video uh, to the user so this is an example of agv uh, of video data then we have a example of quality inspections so this is a very interesting example specifically in the context of supply chain yeah, this is uh, very important so if you have seen chip uh, there are lot of circuits are there like small small circuits are there and if there is any mistake in the circuit then there will be error the chip will not function properly so i have to inspect each and every chip otherwise customers will complain and very small like it goes in mobile phone imagine how small it is so if i have to check manually it's very strenuous for the eyes and sometimes we make mistake uh, human make mistake so therefore there will be error sometimes the good quality chip might be treated as bad quality sometimes bad quality chip might be passed as good quality so both the things are uh, problematic for us so therefore what we need to do we need to check properly and make sure that uh, the proper quality chip is going to the market so nowadays lot of technology has come to do this and one of the analytics which is being used for quality inspection is called image analytics so what they are doing uh, specifically in chip industry nowadays so they have the example of best quality chip which is super circuit is fine so that is benchmark image and that is tested against each and every chip which is passing through the uh, manufacturing facility so i will take example uh, image photo of each and every chip then we will compare it with the benchmark chip which is the best quality chip if there is any discrepancy then automatically red flag will be highlighted and i know that this chip has problem in the circuit so not only the discrepancies will be highlighted it will also tell like at exactly at which point or which location of the circuit there is a mistake so engineer will get to know that this part of the circuit there is a mistake so that is how image uh, analytics are being used heavily uh, nowadays 
then I will also give another example of uh, video analytics. So, we now talked about image analytics. So, I will also give an example of video analytics. So, if you uh, like go and visit some of the best warehouse in the world European Union and uh, USA. So, now slowly slowly this technology is coming as we talked about inventory count as we talked about inventory count in the previous uh, example. So, in warehouse I have to make sure that whatever number of SKUs are there in my warehouse it has to match in the system. If system says 10 the physical warehouse also should say there is 10 products in the warehouse. So, this has to match if there is a discrepancy then there will be problem. What would be the problem? Like if I say I have 10 units SKU in my warehouse and in reality I am only having 9 then I will not be able to serve my 10th customers. Okay. And if I say 10 but in reality if I have 11 then one product is unaccounted. So, which will lie here and there and obviously it will become obsolete. So, I have to make sure that whatever number is shown in the ERP system the same number uh, should be shown in the physical warehouse also. So, then how do I check it? Because if you go to a large warehouse like thousands of SQ sometimes lakhs of SQs are there which are lying in the aisles and most of the aisles are like some horizontal, some vertical very difficult to check each and every day and it is manual work. So, it will take lot of time. Now, video through video analytics through video analytics companies are able to do it. So, what do they do after the factory is shut down after the warehouse is shut down in the night they put the video on top of UAV unmanned aerial vehicle that is drone. So, drone is fitted with the video camera and then drone moves across the aisles they scan the QR code of each and every aisle products and in the morning report is being generated. So, if there is a discrepancy of particular SQ it will be shown over there. So, manual inventory count has actually been replaced by video analytics. So, it is very good example and now companies are also using this technology. So, these are about video. So, there are uh, many such examples. So, now let us move to the next V called velocity. So, what is velocity? The data generated at a very high speed real time. So, real time data and it is being generated at a high speed. So, every fraction of second lot of data being generated. We talked about this in e-commerce. So, in e-commerce 24 by 7 you can place an order from any part of the world. So, lot of being data, data are being generated at a high speed and real time. So, I will give another example of GPS tracking of vehicle. So, nowadays like uh, good logistics service providers uh, they have trucks in which GPS is installed and it is very like it is not so costly uh, technology to adapt. So, companies are adopting it also. So, they have GPS installed in their truck. truck. So, whenever truck is moving from one location to another location I would get to know where the truck is exactly located. So, this is very important because let us consider uh, that you are sending material from Mumbai to Guwahati. It is a long distance from west to east. We have to travel 3 4 days of travel and if I am sending a high value item so obviously I am more worried. So, I need to know where the exact location is. Okay. So, if I uh, get to know the GPS uh, latitude and longitude of each and every second then I will know where the track is. And let us say GPS location is fixed for next 1 hour, 2 hour, then I will know that the track is waiting over there. So, I will be able to track it where it is currently located. I will also be able to know if there is any problem or uh, problem or not. So, let us say one track has been has been ideal, the GPS location is same for the next 5 6 hours. So, obviously, I will be alarmed. I will know that there might be an issue, I will talk to the driver and get it sorted. So, this kind of real time data will obviously be useful for me and definitely lo uh, logistics facility will be more efficient. 
then uh, we have another example of real time data and uh, nowadays uh, across the world is also being implemented is monitoring drivers eyeball uh, because mostly the drivers are driving in the night this long distance big trailer trucks and driving in the night because during the day traffic will be there and city entry and uh, closure are like closed so therefore mostly they prefer in the night and obviously if you drive in the night you are prone to fall asleep so if driver falls asleep obviously accident will happen so now through image analytics through image analytics now through image analytics what companies are doing they are tracking the capturing the image of the eyeballs like na every seconds and these image are being sent to the server so if i can see that eyeballs are not moving driver's eyeball are not moving for the 2 3 minutes let us say continuously so obviously driver may fall asleep so therefore i will put an alarm if there is no movement in eyeball for like so continuously for some time and then the drivers will be alarmed he will get up fresh and again start driving so that is how we can also minimize the accident then we have a next four uh, v which is variability so what do you mean by variability so i have like variability within a particular kind of data so there is a difference between variability and variety so in variety i have variety of data forms it could be image audio video text but within a particular kind of data let us say it is a text data so within a text data set i will have variability so we will give an example of demand data so now if i take the example of demand data uh, the foreign for electronics items okay so during diwali in india obviously the sale goes up then again the sales come down so there are variability in the de demand so sometimes demand is low sometimes demand is high so this is called variability and now because of the digitization social media and customers behavior are changing a lot so therefore variability has become the part and parcel of today's data so in 20 30 years back the data was not so variable obviously there were seasonality there were trends but variability has increased nowadays exponentially so how do i capture this variability that is a challenge and specifically if you see uh some of the industry like uh, in which customers behavior plays a very significant role the data has become much uh, variable so whatever items we used to like uh, last year customers used to buy in huge volume the same items are not being sold specifically i'll give an example of beauty products in fmcg domain and it is directly linked with customer behavior how customer perceives uh, this product and so on so therefore the lot of variability are there so may, if i see next last 2 3 years data for maybe for particular brand particular item customers were liking it and now the same products are not being sold in the uh, market the how maybe the new competitors have come and they have taken away my demand so therefore Uh, whatever advertisement you are seeing in the media uh, social media hot topics are being discussed this has direct impact on my demand variability so these four like volume variety uh, velocity and variability these are four main pillars of big data in addition to this we have two important v uh, the next one is value that means uh, whatever data is being generated it should be useful uh, for my organization or it should be useful for me uh, it should be useful for my team then only it makes sense then the next one is uh, veracity 
this is very very important uh, topic called veracity. So, that means the data generated should be accurate and come from a reliable or trustworthy sources. So, one good thing is digitization happen and social media are there uh, Twitter, Instagram. So, we are getting news updates fraction of seconds. So, information is plenty available to us and it is fraction of second in one part of the world whatever is happening I will get to know from another part of the world. This is fantastic, but what happens this also creates problems in terms of the reliability or trustworthiness of the data. Okay. So, therefore, I have to make sure that whatever data I am getting it should be accurate and it should not be a fake data, it should not be fake image or it should not be a uh, wrong data. So, if I enter wrong data obviously, my model also will give me the wrong output. So, therefore, uh, as a data scientist I have to make sure that uh, these six V are being uh, monitored properly. Uh, I have to check what is the volume of the data, what is the variety of the data, what is the velocity, uh, is there any variability in the data so on and whether it is bringing value to the organization or not. And lastly, the veracity should be there that means data should be accurate. So, these 6 V characterize my big data and these are very very important like going forward like as a participant or as a student you have to make sure that you follow this big P uh, 6 Vs then you will not have any like difficulty in understanding the characteristic of big data. Now, we understood the concept of uh, big data. So, in the next class uh, we will talk about like analytics. Okay. So, like different kind of analytics uh, which we can do using this data and develop models which and can help in supply chain domain. So, with this we stop this uh, video. So, thank you all the participants uh, look forward to seeing you in the next lecture in which we talk about analytics and types of analytics and its application in supply chain management domain. So, thank you look forward to see you in the next video.